Oh man, <laughs> people are not going to like this, but I feel like I need to say something and I can't sit around and be quiet. So I um, have been doing a lot of really deep thinking and I've had sort of like a, a revelation that... Um, we can all agree that we want to live in a place where we are free, respected, and are able to provide the best possible life for our children and for our families. And I believe that the family unit is under attack and we've been blinded um, by a false war on women and what that means. And so I wrote this down and I was going to type it out and just send it as an email or something, but I think it's better said. So I'm just going to read it. And like all of these points, they... Um, there's factual evidence behind them, there's statistics, there's um, all these tangents that I could go off on. I'm going to try and read this without going off on too many tangents. Um, but what I'm trying to get at is this is not just me saying random things. I'm trying to offend people. I'm trying to get the truth out there. And, you know, um, just because I didn't like, I sat down and I wrote this off the top of my head. Like, I didn't sit down and um, cite all my references like I'm writing, you know, my college thesis or something. Although, I absolutely could and there's a lot of um, supporting evidence that to go along with the things that I'm saying here. So, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and get right to it. So, um, recently there was an episode of Dr. Phil. <laughs> um, where Matt Walsh is a political commentator, um, a right-wing political commentator, um, was speaking with um, transgender, non-binary non people on the transgender issue. And one of the things that he said that really struck me um, was, so they, they were talking about how, um, like, a transgender person might identify as a woman and Matt's question was well what is a woman can you define what a woman is and um, the um, non-binary person said it's not for me to say that's not for me to say and it just um, reduced womanhood into a subjective experience and um, Matt he came back at, at this person and said, I believe that you are appropriating women, turning women into a costume that you can wear. <laughs> and I just, I just couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And they, they didn't have anything to say to that other than, um, this, like they would cut, they came back like a week later and like, we've been traumatized by this experience. And, um, this is hate speech and how dare Dr. Phil allow this person on here to say such hateful things. But like, listen to this again. I believe you are appropriating women, turning a woman into a costume you can wear. So today's culture is controlling the idea of woman, what a woman is by abusing the uniqueness of female capabil capabilities and minimizing the value of motherhood. The idea of a woman who stays home and cares for her family is viewed as a negative result of the patriarchy, but I would argue that insisting that a woman can and should do all things that men do is more of an injustice because it implies that women are perpetual victims of their natural tendencies and should strive to be more like men rather than embracing our unique gifts of caring, loving, and bringing families together. The attack on the traditional family is a direct attack on women. Birth control and abortion reduce the value of sex from a life-changing and giving means of creation to a frivolous, vapid encounter 
Reducing sex to nothing sets women up for mental and physical abuse and turns life itself into an option rather than a gift. You know, I'm a birth doula. I've seen things. I've learned things. Um, I have all this knowledge of birth and things that happen in a hospital and versus things that happen in a home birth or at a birth center. And the differences between the two is just, it's just shocking. Okay. Women are subjected to so much abuse and the, the number one way to avoid interventions, um, in childbirth, it, to av avoid things like an induction, um, to avoid C-sections, all of this, the number one thing to do is to not go to a hospital. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous um, because we have this idea of what birth should be um, based on the culture and the experiences uh, that have been passed down onto us. So um, most women will give birth at some point and this transforming event has been reduced to a medical procedure that has rooted itself in a history of abuse and power. And the industry preys on the ignorance of women who have been subjected to indoctrination of fear from generations of women that have experienced this abuse. I believe that is, it is our responsibility as women to combat this ingrained abuse through the truth and knowledge of the natural capabilities of women. So basically what I'm saying is birth does not always have to be a medicalized event. Um, the doctor doesn't have to be the one that makes the decisions for you. You should make the decisions for yourself because your body is naturally doing what it is supposed to do. It should rarely be a medical event. Like, I'm not saying that there aren't reasons to go to the hospital. What I'm saying is we have all this knowledge. We have um, evidence to support that a natural home birth is um, the best option, the safest option for um, a low risk woman. And yet we still perpetuate the idea that a woman needs to go to the hospital every time she's in labor. Well, it's simply not the case. Uh, and it's dangerous. <laughs> it's just dangerous to continue this. And that's what I mean by a history of abuse of power. We're stuck in this cycle of things we've been doing forever. I mean, if um, if you want a better history of um, what I'm trying to get out here, you should read um, Hypnobirthing, the, um, the Mongan Method, Mongan, something like that. It's a Hypnobirthing, the original Hypnobirthing book. And um, she really goes into depth about what I'm saying here and the history behind medicalized birth and why we're still doing it absolutely makes no sense. It makes no sense. And it's hurting women. It's hurting women and it's um, instilling fear in birth. And the thing that we are designed to do, it's, just, it's insane to me. It is, by definition, insanity. Just doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results when we know that there are better ways to do this. And it is backed up by evidence and all these things, and yet we ignore it and continue to go on with what we've been doing. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. So that's why it's our responsibility as women to share this information with other women, and get the knowledge out there so that we can make informed choices and better the health of the women in our nation. I don't understand why <laughs> this issue has been overlooked and then what are we looking at instead? Abortion and birth control, things that hurt women. Hold on. Okay, <laughs> um, I had to stop and talk to my son for a minute, but 
I'm going to go on reading now. Um, Improving the lives of women involves boldly speaking truth and shining a light on the lies of culture. The lie is that women are victims of our own bodies and that sexual liberation would set us free from the responsibility of the home, which was once viewed as sacred. Women are teachers, providers, lovers, friends, and the establishers of community. Our bodies are not prisons of weakness or vessels for men. They are tools of creation and literal depictions of the sustenance of life. American women have achieved the goal of equality, yet there is a continuation of the battle that has been won in the corporate world while the vitality of our natural abilities has been neglected and reduced to being more like men and abusing our bodies as a result. We've been taught that servitude to our families is a cage of oppression rather than something we should take pride in and that we should instead focus on the desires of self and personal goals that incorporate corporate and physical success, not facilitating the growth and education of our own children. So what I mean by that is we're constantly told, oh, girl, you need to take care of yourself. You need to focus on your goals. You need to get yourself out there. You need to get a job. You need to have a side hustle. You need to do um, all of these things. What are you doing for you? Um, and we're just weighed down by motherhood all the time talking about the struggles of caring for our children and feeling like um, we're doing all these things and no one is helping us and you know whoa whoa is us but I mean where where is the joy that we once had in doing these things you know it I'm not gonna lie yes been, <laughs> I've been incredibly lonely and especially since the the start of COVID and, you know, my, I live in a military community and, um, my best friend has moved away and I feel pretty isolated a lot of times and it's hard to raise children alone and, um, community has just been snatched out from underneath us. And with that, we have lost the joy that comes with maintaining a home and fellowship that can come from other women. Instead, we're too busy focusing on, oh, I can do X, Y, and Z to make myself feel better about myself. It's all about the self. Care about yourself. Do things for yourself. But that's against our nature as women. Our nature as women is to care for others. We need others. So anyway, um, I just believe that we need to restore, restore joy in our own homes and um, enjoy the hard work that comes with caring for and supporting our families and creating communities of women that come together to help each other. <clears throat> These are the hard truths that many will perceive as hate speech, but living in a self-serving world in the name of politeness will leave us alone and in the dark. It's time to stand up against the true war on women and boldly speak truth in a time of confusion. So I'm going to read Proverbs 31, and um, hopefully this is encouraging to any um, woman out there, any anyone that's trying to find truth, um, anyone that thinks that a woman isn't supposed to um, do any kind of work outside the home, or that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm saying the things that we should find joy in is not in ourselves, um, but in each other and serving each other and um i hope this speaks truth so <clears throat> this is proverbs 31 the sayings of king lamel 
I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, contain this message, which his mother taught him. O oh, son, my son, son of my womb, O oh, son of my vows, do not waste your strength on women, on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, O oh, Lemuel, to guzzle wine. Rulers should not crave alcohol, for if they drink, they may forget the law and not give justice to the oppressed. Alcohol is for the dying, and wine for those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty, and remember their troubles no more. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves. Ensure justice for those being crushed. Yes, speak up for the poor and helpless, and see that they get justice. Who can find a virtuous and capable wife? She is more precious than rubies. Her husband can trust her, and she will greatly enrich his life. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She finds wool and flax and busily spends it. She is like a merchant ship, bringing her food from afar. She gets up before dawn to prepare breakfast for her household and plan the day's work for her servant girls. She goes to inspect a field and buys it. With her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She is energetic and strong, a hard worker. She makes sure her dealings are profitable and her lamp burns late into the night. So that, that's what I mean when I say that. Um, yeah, it's not saying that a woman shouldn't work outside the home. Uh, what I'm saying is a woman should be busy and take pride in her work. That's not what I'm getting at. I'm not saying you should just be barefoot and pregnant in the kitchen. That's not... That's not what God intended, and it's, it's right here. <sighs> her hands are busy spinning thread, her fingers twisting fiber. She extends a helping hand to the poor and opens her arms to the needy. She has no fear of winter for her household. Everyone has warm clothes. So she's caring for her family. Everything that she does is to care for her family. And she's finding happiness, energetic and strong. She's finding this and caring for her family. She makes her own bedspreads. She dresses in fine linen and purple gowns. So she also takes care of herself. Um, her husband is well known at the city gates where he sits with other civic leaders. She makes belted linen gar garments and sashes to sell to the merchants. Look, there she is. She's got her hustle, too. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. She is carefully watching everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. Her children stand and bless her. Her husband praises her. There are many virtuous and capable women in the world but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty does not last, but a woman who fears the Lord will be greatly praised. Reward her in all that she has done. Let her deeds publicly declare her praise. So, that's what a woman should be. And I thought it was intimidating for a really long time, but um, you know, this woman has a lot of help and we're currently living in a time where our community isn't helping us and we're not doing anything to change that. And so I think we need to stand up and start speaking truth and helping each other and especially other women standing together and helping, um, fight the battle that we're in. There's so much more to this. Every attack on the family is attack and an, an attack on women. And we need to take charge of the situation and start speaking up because we can't just sit in silence and allow ourselves to fall into this trap where who we are, our very DNA is belittled into a social construct. That is not what we are. It's just not. There is no truth in that. You don't get to say, oh, a woman is what, who, whatever you say it is. That's not the truth here. So 
I hope, um, I hope this encouraged somebody. I hope this message meets somebody well. And, um, if anybody has questions, just let me know because I could, I could just talk about this forever. There's so much more. There's so much more, more there. Birth is not just the only thing. Like, um, I could even go on, I could go on so many tangents, but thanks for listening to me. And, um, hopefully I'll have more to say later. <laughs> Bye guys.